You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream. This is AfterBuzz TV for Boardwalk Empire. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest Boardwalk Empire news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for Boardwalk Empire. Hey, everybody. How are you? Yeah, hey, 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 hey. What's up? It's Bethany and Tamara here. Tamara. Tamara. I'm like so a camera. sorry. Like a camera. And I just... It's I, okay. You were uh, writing. Uh, I caught you off guard. It was. It's all crazy tonight. I think this is my favorite episode yeah. so far in the second series. Yeah. I feel like I say that almost every time. <laughs> but um, it's called Gershwin and Bunkum, and it's written by Howard Corridor. And it's directed by Ah, oh, be still my heart, Tim Van Patten. Yeah, if you're out there. I love you. <laughs> and uh, Tam, uh, you you look this up, and it means it, it's actually the phrase is Gim Jim or Jim. What is well, it? Well, the, the name of Bunkum? the the name of the episode. Wherever else I looked it up, we we have it written down. That it's Gershwin and Bunkum is the name of the episode. Yeah. But then it said G- G- Gim Chuck and Bunkum, which I actually didn't have time to figure out while we were uh, coming on the air. But yeah, you have bunkum means meaningless political claptrap uh, talk that is insincere and empty, which is what we open up on. Yeah, we we open up on Memorial Day, mm-hmm. and I'm guessing it's I don't know if it's like the first or third Memorial Day, but Memorial Day is something that's fairly new, right? Uh, to to America, America at that mm-hmm. point in time. Mm-hmm. And I love this episode particularly because it seems to take place within 24 hours. Yeah. And so we open on a beautiful Memorial Day morning with Nucky giving this speech of... Which we know is bunk room. <laughs> which is completely insincere. Bunk-um. And he, he begins the speech by challenging Jimmy. Yeah. Um, and uh, he gets up to the podium and... What, what, God, what is it that they say? Oh, yeah, you think I can't play this game? Yeah. And he's like, I don't think you even know the rules. So <laughs> there's a lot of tension there. Yeah. Yeah, and Nucky talks, and I think this is kind of a theme that goes through the episode, which we'll talk about as we go, but Nucky talks about loyalty. And speaking of loyalty, let's bring up my loyal friend Jimmy. And it's like, oh, man. I, I mean, really just like calling him out. Yeah, he does. He know he totally calls him out. And and it's um, an episode in which uh, pe- pe- people really lose their lives uh, <laughs> due, literally, due, yeah. due to their loyalty. Mm-hmm. So this speech happens. Everything happens. Um, the Commodore is now paralyzed. Incapacitated. He's yeah. totally incapacitated, and they're trying to keep keep the lid on that. When we opened up, I thought Nucky knew. When we opened right. up in that I first did too. Scene. I right? did too, because he says he's away on business. You know, I thought he was just covering up. Exactly. Except why would he? There's no reason yeah. to. There is no reason for him to cover. To cover up. Um, and then I'm just going to cut to, we see Eli come to Nucky's house. Mm-hmm. And 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 for, there's a moment there in which I think that they're going to make up. Did you feel yeah, that? Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Absolutely, I, I thought, thought that was going to happen. That it, I mean, he was, and, and, you know, they're fighting and... And finally, Eli's crying, and he's he's pleading, and 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 Nucky goes, "Okay, that's fine. Just one thing, anything, I'll do it. Anything." Eli says, "Right." Yep, and just kiss my shoes, just kiss and beg, and he doesn't even really give him the opportunity to do that because he just attacks him. Right. That's a pretty vicious fight, wasn't it? It it was really vicious, and I I. I almost thought that Nucky was going to die, and then I remembered it's not Game of Thrones, and they don't kill off their lead characters. <laughs> <laughs> so we we're so, lucky for that. We're so. lucky for that. So I was like, okay, I can open my eyes now. Um, but still, they they are not that 
those brothers are not going to make amends. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like that's going to happen anytime Mm -hmm. soon Mm -hmm. um, whatsoever. Uh, God, what to talk about next? I'm just trying to think. Um, I just want to jump over to Jimmy because Jimmy's hanging out with all the old men. Right. And they're they're like, so where's our money? And they're they're only asking for was it seventeen grand? Seventy. Seventy. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't it yeah, sounded like so seventeen the, and, and they, they thought it was seventy, but it's so they're at, they invested seventy grand in in bribing the Coast Guard and uh like when well, getting the booze, you know, on land and then in that expl- in the the warehouse that exploded last week. So yes. they lost all of their stuff. That's not good. And yeah. Which is kind of comes full circle cuz that's kind of what Jimmy did to Nucky on the mm-hmm. very first pilot episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, and he ended up taking the booze <laughs> and getting them, but it's kind of like I I just kind of feel like they're children stealing each other's toys. And right. And it's just like one has the toys for a little while and then they're like, no, I give it back. Give it back. Yeah. And the other one takes it. And so how it's just is sometimes, isn't I, it? I guess so. I guess so. I don't. Um, it's interesting to say, to say the least, but he's dealing with all of these old men. And then there's this one really crazy old man. Mr. Partner. What is Parkhurst. it? Parkhurst. 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 Yeah. I would love to. I, I only wish we had time in between watching these I know, we only have like going, five minutes between watching the end of the show and, and getting on the air. And so as much as we would love to be like Googling things, we don't have the time to. I know, and because I know there's some some like social historical thing there yeah. about Mr. Parkhurst. Yeah. I bet you HBO yeah. Special Features lets us know. Right, exactly. <laughs> but um, he seems pretty hell-bent on... Um, he just tells this this very long and yet beautiful monologue of how he like annihilates a bunch of Native Americans. Yeah, which is really dark, and 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 frightening. And um, Jimmy's trying to calm them all down. They're like, "We want our money. We want our money." And then at, at which point, uh, the Mister Parkhurst like nails Jimmy in the head with that that silver tipped cane yeah, yeah or silver handled cane and um he he dim- dismisses himself um which i'm so glad he, and it's one of my favorite characteristics of jimmy is that he doesn't often explode right like somebody attacks him yeah and he he holds it in for a little bit and and like feels the injury and then goes home and thinks about it and and it's i mean the re- Repercussions are, are usually much worse mm-hmm. <laughs> when, when when somebody reacts in that way. Right. When they react immediately, you mean? Um, no, or no, no. When they, when they w- w- oh. with, w- because he just he he sits in it, right, and thinks about like, right. okay, all right, you hit me. Now what am I going to do to you? Right. And and really plots it out. So um, where do you where do you think where do you imagine he got those characteristics of really sort of being the you know more. Uh, conniving for lack of a better word and and le- you know less like you say explosive mm-hmm. he's more 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 nucky internal yeah yeah because i mean we, yeah. we saw nucky and eli fight it out and nucky, nucky was losing clearly right. i mean look at look at the the, the muscle and the mass on of them. course yeah like when nucky went for eli's throat i was like really are you gonna do that because I, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, where do you think he gets it from? Well, I think I think that's right. Yeah. And it, but it could also be be having been in the military and having been through war. Okay. You yeah. know where you you know in 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 that situation you're often taking orders from other people, um, and you have to sort of you know consider those things, but you don't get to necessarily do you know, what, what is of your choosing yes. right away. Mm-hmm. And so perhaps when, you know, when he's come back, even though he has the freedom to do what he wants, mm-hmm. he's still coming from that, you know, there's sometimes a bigger picture yeah. going on. Yeah. Maybe. No, I agree with you. No, that, no, it's, it's that, that makes full sense. But, I, but Nucky, I think absolutely. I mean, Nucky clear, mm-hmm. we, we've never seen him really have a fight before. No, and not, so not, he, not a physical one. And no. not, and I, certainly not explode. He's very calm you know, mild, ma- not mild mannered, but, you know, calm tempered in yeah. situations. And, and so he seems like he always had, cause, cause Nucky knows always what's going on, mm-hmm. you know? And so he can afford to be more calculated and more, um, 
plotting. You know, plan exactly yeah. more more being the plotter and planner. Whereas Eli is is just so explosive. He mm -hmm. just reacts to mm -hmm. everything. Like mm -hmm. like and and Nucky says that he's like you you didn't finish it. You know, the minute something goes wrong, it falls apart for you. Basically, is what right. he was saying. He's like there there's no follow through with you. You got into this mess, and and now you come to me. But Eli is so reactive. Even when he gets hit with the cane, Jimmy gets hit with the cane and he walks out, Eli reacts immediately. He goes, where are you going? Come on. Like, did you got to, I, I hooked you up with these yeah, guys. you got to go throw a punch or something or, or at least, or apologize or whatever it is he wants he, He's to do. just, it's it's so immediate for him, mm -hmm. um, which is which is why he ends up where he does at the end of the episode. Uh, Eli, you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to get to that yet because it's at the end. Not, I mean, of course, the viewers have watched it, but yeah, we all know what happens. We've all been there. <laughs> but um, bump. Well, um, let's talk about Richard a little bit, shall yes, we? Yes, please, because this is I, I, I just I love that they're writing more for him. The, we're actually looking at the scene right here where he's looking through the scrapbook, which I thought was just gorgeous. I mean that that. Uh, Looking at that piece, I was thinking, gosh, I would love, I mean, what a beautiful work of art. What a beautiful chronology of his life. Mm -hmm. All these romantic pictures of couples and, you know, a baby sitting in a in a normal apartment and kind of idyllic life and the yeah. things that I'm sure he thinks he will never have. I, it's it's so it's so beautiful from from a character perspective, from a directing perspective, like it 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 like clues us in so instantly to say, to have this man with this like broken face yes. and broken soul looking at these images yes. of families and and uh, uh, looking at images of security and mm -hmm. love and it just like literally I think I stop breathing when I watch it because it's just it is so sad because you want don't you want yeah yes. yeah you want those things for him yes and he like prepares his he he prepares everything so. I, I'm I'm not going to use the word meticulous because it's not meticulous. It's it's almost just careful and caring mm -hmm. in the way mm -hmm. in which he prepares his things. It's not it's not in some like type A way where he's like I need this here, I need that there. It's just like this is my food and I'm going to wrap it mm -hmm. and I'm going to put my hat on my head and make sure my room is clear. Like I I yeah. I feel like it's all with a very nurturing tone. Yeah, and maybe that's my projection onto it, but if that's if that's what they're going for, it works. Yeah, and he he gets into the woods. Um, and of course he's always so polite. He thanks his ride. Yeah. <laughs> he's Thank just so kind hearted, he <laughs> seems, isn't it? Which is such Thank an interesting dichotomy like, I, for him. Right. But I mean, if you were going to out into the woods to commit suicide, I don't know if a lot of people would be like, Thank you very much. I appreciate the ride. It was very I'm very grateful for that. It, it's really not yeah. like the first thing on your mind. No, no, indeed. But he does it. Mm -hmm. Um and and he gets out there and I think you know what what Tim does for us, uh, the director, is he keeps off offering us flashes of life that are very beautiful. Uh -huh. And we we see that bird. Yeah, it's like is that a pheasant? I thought it was. I'm not. I'm not so good on that. I think I think it might. I used to have them in my yard in Rhode Island. That that was my thought. I thought oh that must be a pheasant. Yeah. So. And so I'm guessing. And if and they're hunting and that's what they yeah. do in these woods, it probably and, was. And it was it was just beautiful, and he was just kind of taking, marveling yeah. at it, sort of. And and then he he lays down and he he sees the trees, and which again beautiful shot, right? Gorgeously right? composed. Ah, yeah. So it's so amazing, and he's thinking about putting. Well, he is. He he goes to put the gun to his mouth. And just side yeah. note, thank goodness you and I had John here watching the show with us <laughs> because did. whenever anything gets gruesome, and there were plenty of gruesome scenes in this uh, episode, it's you and so I true. were both like this. We're watching like this. And I turned to John, I go, tell me what's happening. And he's like, okay, he's got the gun to his chin. And I was like, and you're just squealing over there. Going, I oh, am. I, oh you, you don't ever want to watch anything with me because I'm so, <laughs> you're saying I'm no, the it's same, true. No, I'm the same way. Because I'm so loud. I, I will talk through it. I, 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 it's not, it, yeah, it's, it's my, all my, those, my husband's very good about it. It's all those times of watching HBO Go at home. Yeah, it probably <laughs> is, because I can, like, stop and read a little bit about what's going on, and then, but I, I get into it. I'm, I'm very much like my Italian grandmother, who's like, there's somebody behind you. <laughs> <laughs> they have a knife. Watch out. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So we're sitting there not watching Richard think about whether, which kind of bothers me sometimes because I would love to have actually watched what was going on with his face, but I was too afraid. Yeah. So I'll probably go back to HBO Go and, and, and watch and it again, watch knowing it again. that he's going to be okay. But, um, but yeah, so he's holding the gun up to his chin mm -hmm. and 
We're both squealing. It's an incredibly uncomfortable moment. John's narrating for us. I know. I and John know. the whole time was going, he's not going to do it. He's the, he's too good a yeah, character. He's, he's not going to do yeah, it. I know. <laughs> They've got too much invested in him. And I agree. I agree that they have too much invested with him. Sometimes that doesn't always pay off, though. Sometimes they kill him anyway. Uh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Just oh, they just kill everybody in that. You get you get yeah. completely invested in a character and they're gone. So, But the other thing that we just kind of went over but quickly that I wanted to go back to was he pulled out his dog tags. And 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 his you know, medal, or his medal, yeah, and and put that in in the, in the front of his you know his clothing and everything just before he lay down to I know to pull the trigger and again just like touching 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 yeah. and then he decides not to because, because we hear and he had and and we see I thought it was a wolf at first but clearly it's a it's a dog wolf or a, a dog, wild dog a wild dog or, yeah, I think, yeah. um, which is excellently cast by the way yeah. <laughs> He's scary. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yeah. Picks um, up the mask, runs away, and mm -hmm. but the, and, and the great thing about it is that uh, Richard then says, "Hey, wait, I need that mask." Well, why do you need that, that mask? mask. If you're going to kill yourself. Exactly. So exactly. We like, yeah! I know. We're like, Go, Richard. <laughs> Go get that mask. You need that mask. Live, Richard. <laughs> yes. And and it's and I I I I would have to. I feel like this is one of the more spiritual episodes mm -hmm. because it is really kismity mm -hmm. and and just odd that life kept popping up and, yes. and saying no no we're not ready for you to go yet right um at the moment he's about to kill himself that a wild animal appears and, and kind of saves him right and so it was it yeah i think it was the first time we 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 really touch on that at all in boardwalk empire the what the just any spirituality any, any any spiritual element that like there's mm -hmm. there's like the possibility that you know there's something else out there right um I'm trying to think back if there are any episodes like that, but I don't think so. I don't, it's not coming to me. No, no. It, and and so he he chases after the dog, and then and then I feel like another angel kind of like sweeps in, mm -hmm. <laughs> and is the, there's this man going, "Hey, hey, you!" And he you can tell he's he's just lost in the woods and kind of abandoned, and he's like, right. "What? What? I don't I don't know if you've ever gotten lost in the woods before." Thankfully, no. It's not fun. I would imagine. I I, I mean, I grew up in the woods, so I, I like in the middle of the woods, so I wouldn't get too lost. But if you lose your sense of direction for a little bit, it oh, can terrifying. It, it, yeah, it can be completely terrifying. Um, let alone if you want or if you want to kill yourself, I can't even imagine that. Um, Right, and you know, thinking about just his psychological journey. So he, we saw him getting ready to leave his his place. He gets to the woods. He's, um, you know, tried to kill himself. So he's been in, you know, this sad spot, for lack mm -hmm. of a better word. You know, he's 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 clearly, you know, pretty much as low as you can go. Yeah, and then gets saved by the dog and meets Glenmore and Pete at yeah. the. And such, a, you know, interest, again, interesting characters, interesting setting, a place I've never really spent any time sitting by a spit in the uh, woods, I you know, know cooking I can't, my squirrel I can't imagine for dinner. the prop person that had to go out and get the squirrel. I'm guessing that they like went down to Chinatown and, and, and grabbed some squirrel right, or maybe they yeah. just have some in reserve. I don't, I don't know. Like, where do you get the squirrel? Maybe they made them out of. I don't know. Play. We should ask them. Yeah. Just call up props. Um, <laughs> and the the wonderful thing that that uh, I think it was Glenmore said to him, which was, you know, I need to tell you something because they they figured out he wasn't a hunter, right? What oh, should clearly. I do with the what What should I do with the bones? He sticks them in his pocket. I know. You know? And, and some, he has a some bow. People would throw it in the fire. I think he has like a bow tie and tweed on. Yes. And they're in their like clearly uh, they're I, I I don't even know hunting outfits yeah 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 <laughs> we we live in la yeah yeah we're, yeah, we're not country girls <laughs> but um, um but he says you know you need to understand something he says to richard mm -hmm. you need to understand that people come out here to do things and his last line was these these woods are for living understand yeah I love that I thought, i just thought that was really powerful it was it was and 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 I love that he didn't take ownership of the dog. He's like, "Is that your dog?" And he was like, "Nope. He's his own. He's his own dog mm -hmm. or his own being." Mm -hmm. And and then you kind of look at the dog, and he's and he says something like, "He's fought like a lot of fights, or or he's a soldier." And right. He, and th at which point you look at the dog again, and you realize that like it does. It has like all these scars on its nose right. and on its face. That's why I'm like this cat. Very good casting. Well, the dog. well cast dog. <laughs> yes. And and so it it 
it again it brings that spiritual element of like, huh, oh, this was we were meant to find. Oh, us. What are they called? Familiars? Is that what it's called? A familiar when when yeah. a, a a witch has a um animal yeah. that that hangs out with them. It's their familiar. Oh, I didn't know so, that. I yeah. love that. Maybe. Maybe that's what Maybe it is. Maybe the dog is uh, Richard's new familiar. Not I, that Richard's a witch. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying <laughs> and now he has we're a connection. Going, it's, it's a new genre. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'd watch that show. Well, and then um, then Richard goes back to Eli. Yes. Right? And says, what does he say to him? Would you fight for me? No, not Eli. Jimmy. I mean, Jimmy. Excuse me, that's Jimmy. Okay. What am I saying? He, he, God, yeah, I just no, Eli was a top it's, word it's, on it's that okay. page. But, I could um, never conf- com- confuse those two. No, They're no, but it's, but it's but, night now. And he's, you know, and, and the wife even is like, I thought you would be at the memorial. And she, and he's like, I didn't really want to be right. there for that. Right, I wasn't really interested in that. Yeah, which I, I understand. Yeah, you yeah, know, a little too much pain, a little too close to home. It's, I, I, I can't even imagine what it's like. I, I can't imagine, like, going to war, being conflicted morally about the things I'm doing and ethically. Right. And then come home and, like, it's sunny and beautiful mm-hmm. <laughs> and being awarded. And being like, but no, I, I I can't even fathom what that's like. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I could see why he wouldn't want to show up for that. Yeah. Um, but again, that brought up the, the, the con- I'm just going to just hit this one home all ahead. over the next 30 minutes that we have. Just mm-hmm. the loyalty again. Yes. So this in, to, to go back to the opening scene where we had the memorial service going on, we had these soldiers standing around. A lot of the ones in the back were injured, mm-hmm. you know, had limbs lost and, yeah. and, and things like that going on with them. But they felt probably the sense of loyalty and the sense of duty mm-hmm. to be there for the fallen who maybe had served with them. And then, you know, like you say, not necessarily were being awarded. They weren't on stage. They were no, standing no, way no. in back, but they had that that really strong sense of, of duty and honor. Mm-hmm. And then that came, that concept came through with uh, Richard and Jimmy, I felt, mm-hmm. where he says to Jimmy, you know, would you fight for me? And Jimmy yeah. says something like always. And, right? uh, and then Richard said, well, then let's get to work. Because he just needed someone to care for him. Yeah, he just wants, yep, he just and wants sort of to a be re- loved. A, and a reason to be. Which, is, which is what we all want. We want, right. so we want security. Um, and connection. Wa- yeah, yeah, absolutely. A place, a place to call home. And so he, now that he's like, they've made a verbal agreement. Right. I, I think this bond will grow stronger. Right, and I'm 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 hoping for that because I love his character. Yeah, I love Richard. And we we could I could see him every episode, and I'd be happy. So let's talk about Jimmy a little bit because yeah. you were saying you you were really loving how how his progression went through this episode, Jimmy, and how he was sort of taking things back and and so we start we we're kind of all over the place tonight. But I yeah. I know I know it's okay it's okay, okay. I, I'm he was you know he's 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 a rock in this this uh-huh. this whole series. We've yet to see him really lose his cool, mm-hmm. whereas like Nucky can lose his cool at times and Eli can lose his right. cool at times. Jimmy, I don't feel like Jimmy's ever gone. I don't know what to do. <laughs> right. I, I don't know what's next. And so, you know, we finished last week's episode with his his mother mm-hmm. slapping the Commodore. Mm-hmm. Um, beating him. Really. Yeah, really beating him. <laughs> yeah. And yet, you know what? It, it's funny, but I did not like. like I, I empathize with everyone. Yes, most of the time. But I was kind of like, all right, I think you can hit him a few times. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and <laughs> like, the thing is, he's paralyzed. Maybe he doesn't even feel it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's a terrible but thing. But I was to just say, kind of like, all right. I mean, don't do this every day, right. Gretchen Mole. Yeah. Um, but, but she, like, she but had like, some stuff th- to get. She I had a point if, to make. If you needed to get it out one time, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, and then, so in this episode, then she's talking to Jimmy and advising him, yes. right? Yes. And she goes, and he goes, "How do you know those men?" Because she's he. I think he wants to know how intimate she's been with oh, them. Oh yes. And and she goes, "I know them well enough." And uh-huh. so it's I, I don't I don't I don't imagine she's messed around with them, but right. I, I don't doubt that she's like danced naked on their laps. I mean <laughs> it's like yeah. you know, and so she's like, I, I know I know how they work. Right. And, and and she's very calming and nurturing in a weird gangstery kind of way. She's like seventeen thousand dollars is nothing to them. Seventy. 
70. Yes. Seven, <laughs> no, did I say 70? I thought I said it. Maybe. Oh, maybe no. Okay. I just probably misheard you. <laughs> it's okay. $70,000 is nothing to do. Right. And, and he's like, okay. All right. And, and he's, he's like willing to take this burden on. Right. He, he's willing. He, he doesn't go like with his tail between the, his legs like Eli does back to Nucky. Uh-huh. I, I think he's, he, he really wants to stand on his own two feet and yep. just, just keep control of this. What I do find fascinating. Sorry, I'm jumping. No, it's okay. I'm jumping characters here. Um, is actually with, with um, the attorney general. Right. In this episode. Right. Our friend Chris McDonald. Right. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he has this very leisurely life. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, He's a golfer. And and he has clearly he has lots of time. And Nucky is at the point because well, I because I don't know if I've ever seen Nucky do anything leisurely up until this episode like usually he's at work or he's at home or schmoozing when or, he's or yeah out in the world yeah, yeah. Or, or drinking but like i like he's never been like golfing per right. se but he has to go golfing because he needs the attorney general on his yep. side so he does in that big way right <laughs> yeah and and then cut to later that evening um the lawyer's like oh, i gotta go home and we're like okay bye see you and the, the rest of the guys are like well we have the night free. When the cat's away. We we expect you to entertain us. Mm -hmm. That's what we want from you. And That's you can just right. see the look on Nucky's face like, oh, my God, I have to entertain you people. Um, which, I mean, that that is the life he has created. Yes. Nucky, and, you mean. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and he might not be thrilled with that, um, that he has to entertain these people mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and give them bread and circus, so to speak. But that's that's what he has to do. And that that closing shot. Oh my gosh, wasn't that a riot? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I just can't. I mean, you can you clearly see the Eternal General getting like a full blow job mm -hmm. with and a second girl under his arm. Yeah, and he's like, this is. A, I mean, it's it's so like. And one of his buddies simo. standing right here, right? I I don't. I, I mean, I assume that this all occurred and this all happens and this probably all still happens. I just can't believe that, like, men have sex with women, like, being like, hey, man, check this out. I'm doing it. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? Like, I like. there's no sense of privacy. There's, like, no, I think I might go into the other room because he doesn't. Even in the hallway, for goodness sake. Well, he has a bedroom there, but but no, he's just like, this is amazing. Um, and I guess I guess people function that way. Maybe I have like a sheltered Catholic upbringing, and I don't know that that's how people function. Really, you haven't seen that in your sheltered Catholic upbringing. You haven't seen that. That, that I've scene never before, like. Really? I've you never, haven't lived that life. I've never. You gone, haven't been the girl sitting no, right here. I've never gone. No, huh. I've never gone to a party, and people have been like, "Dude, check out this hat I'm getting. It's amazing." <laughs> Like, uh, I'm yeah, just, I just thought that was a great scene. It was such a great representation <laughs> of kind of Nucky's, you know, world. And like you right. say, we see that happening. We see Nucky kind of like, yeah, whatever. Close the door mm -hmm. for goodness sake, because he'd rather not be the guy standing in the room watching the attorney general getting N blown. No, off. no, and they they close the door on him, and they still keep that shot, and it's just like a blurry Nucky. Yeah, wasn't that interesting? It, it was because I I think it is you know their visual representation of how he probably feels right now, right? Like, which is which is like like he wants to be seen for the man that he is. But yet the man that he is is just so askew and messy that mm -hmm. you really like, well, like it, it goes back to like the very first few episodes where Jimmy's like, Nucky, you, you can't be half a gangster. Right. You can't be just like part politician, part gangster. You're either one or the other. Yep. There's no in between. But he's he. Sometimes I don't know if Nucky really knows who he is. I wonder, you know, where I feel like Jimmy knows exactly who he is. Okay. And I think a lot of that has to do with the war that he's been through. Yes. Um, and the family that he has. Yes. Um, and that he's created versus Nucky, who's just kind of like, I don't know. He's just always trying to please people. I don't feel like Jimmy's trying to please people. I feel like Jimmy's trying to please himself and provide for his family. Well, you know what I find is so interesting is that Nucky is, like you say, the guy who's who's always granting favors, yep. right? 
but it's and and he's 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 trying to make sure everyone's taken care of but it's all because that then he's creating a community around himself mm -hmm. so that they will take care of him this is true and so you know it's it's always a, a give with the expectation of something coming back yeah yeah but it, the question is is do they do they take care of him i guess right. we'll, i guess we'll find out when he goes to court Right. If they're really taking care of him. Yeah, which, no kidding. That will be. We'll, gonna is that going to be the next ep episode? I'm I guessing. don't know. I have no idea what the next episode is. Oh, I, well, they, they said in the morning. So I guess that meant, or I felt like that's what they said. Yeah. The, the people, like all of the big wigs that were having sex in his office were like, well, tomorrow, maybe, it was, I don't know. Maybe I'm making, sometimes I make things up in my head. <laughs> Our next episode is called Age of Reason next week. So ooh, yeah. ooh, that would be. I'm. I was, I mean, of course I'm happy that Mrs. Schroeder came to the rescue with that gun. God bless Margaret. Right? And her she, unloaded gun. I know. <laughs> but she's like, she's gotten some balls this she season. She has. Last season, she was kind of like a, just, I, I don't know, I guess Republicans would call her a flip flopper. Mm -hmm. Because she was just kind of flailing everywhere with with her the choices that she was making. Yes. And, and they've really found her voice. Yes. Well, and last week's episode where we saw her squirreling away money yeah. and, you know, kind of she's she's really got some some layers going on there. And there are some things in her past that we're going to start finding out about. The maid brought some of that up. I, I, and I find it so interesting from Mrs. Schroeder's perspective that she thinks she's like on par with these maids. Like, I'm from Ireland, too. We're the same people. And the maids are like, no, 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 no. <laughs> You don't pay me enough money, and you have fancy clothes and right. are totally taken care of, and you don't work. Right. Like let's let's be clear. We may be from the same place, but we we are we're not the same people. We we are not in the same situation. Right. Um, right. And um, we see. Oh my God! I can't remember his name. He's the handsomest thing in the planet in the maids. Oh, room. Mr. Slater. Mr. Slater. Thank mm -hmm. you. I saw him in. I think it's the is it the first episode of Downton Abbey? It's the BBC series that I've, won all I these. I know Emmys. of it, but I haven't seen any oh of it yet. Oh my god! Okay, if you love Boardwalk Empire, this is this is for you, and this is for yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. listening. Yeah. Please go and and I, I don't know if you have like uh, trust me, like Amazon doesn't give us any money, but if you have an Amazon Prime account, I think you can watch <laughs> them all for free. I mean, oh no, kidding, really? Yeah, if you have an Amazon Ooh. Prime account, you can stream anything for free. Um, I did just learned. I I I did because I was like not feeling well one day and I was just lying in bed and I started watching Downton Abbey and if you like Boardwalk Empire you are gonna love Downton Abbey and they've done one uh, one season one right one season but one British season so there's only like oh there's like six episodes yeah right? yeah those <laughs> so, British they are crazy so after six episodes I'm like oh my god when does the next one come out I I can't. What? But yeah. he, but Mr. Slater is I, I they He's must in Downton Abbey. They must have pulled I don't know if they I don't know if he auditioned for this already and that's why right. or or um they saw him in that because he's excellent in that episode. Mm -hmm. Um and he's just uh there's something very charming about him. Yeah, no kidding. And, and clearly it, Betty or whatever her name the maid is. What's her what I can't remember. I don't her name. I don't I don't uh, know. But she yeah. So she but she's spilling secrets to him. Yeah. You know, I was really getting nervous about that. I'm like, shut your trap, lady. Well, in Downton Abbey, not to, I know we're talking about Boardwalk Empire, yeah. but part of the show is like all the secrets that the staff spill. And so, oh, yes, because of course. that's what they do. Of uh, course. And she does. She's starting to spill secrets. And he's just kind of cool, calm, and collective. And he's not like really, he's just kind of taking it all in. I mean, he did set a bomb off last episode. Yeah. Let's be clear. Yeah. <laughs> Um, He's a tough guy. He he is, but he also flirts with Mr. Schroeder a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious where that is going to. Well, lead and them. that combined, what whatever that is, yeah. combined with the information that he's kind of getting, not not that he's fishing for it, but mm -hmm. he's she's volunteering his girlfriend the uh, information about uh, about Margaret. So I that's I I think I. You know, when we get to predictions, I think we're I think Margaret might be getting into some hot I was, water. I was really happy with the way that um, Howard and Tim set started. Setting, Your friends, yes, Howard, my, and, Howard Tim. and Tim. They're my buddies now. <laughs> What's up, guys? But I was really happy with how they set 
how they set things up this episode. Sometimes I feel like I get hit on the head with exposition for the next episode. Yes. For the setup. Well, yeah, because there is a lot of sort of historical information yeah, that needs that to be needs imparted. To, but, but, yeah. but I did not feel that way this right. time around. I agree. I, I just felt like they were telling me a story and I was kind of living through it and mm-hmm. watching things happen. Uh-huh. And I mean, clearly the maid and Mr. Slater is a setup for the next the next couple episodes. But yeah. that, it didn't it didn't feel that way. But and I think that has everything to do with this episode having uh, more emphasis on relationships yep. than what they were doing. I agree. You know, because we had we had Nucky and Eli, mm-hmm. we had Margaret coming in yes. there, we had, you know, the the Richard and these just the Richard's relationship with himself, you know, right. and, and that whole um process that yeah. he's going through. Um, Jimmy trying to figure out who he is and where he's going to create things, mm-hmm. he, t- discussing that with his mother, who he is in regards to Nucky. It was all, you know, it was a lot about relationships in it, this episode. It was, and and which which brings us finally to Eli mm-hmm. and Eli losing control. There was, um, I don't know, somebody was telling me, I can't remember the name of the author, but the book is called Willpower. And w- what I found interesting about the book was that it it says like how m- men of power who make lots of good decisions are under so much stress they eventually make a bad decision like how like mm. is it Eli Spitzer how like he Elliot. could Elliot thank you well it's the character's name Eli. yeah that's yeah. what it's Eli's ours guy <laughs> how he, like guy. he can do like a lot of wonderful things but then you know sleep with a prostitute and mess everything up right and and I kind of feel like Eli even though he was losing control he was really trying to make some decisions <laughs> And he ends up just spinning out of control by the end of this episode and making a really bad one. With George. Oh, poor George. Mm-hmm. I can't. E- I was George one of the old men? I don't know. I can't who, even I remember where even, the heck George had came from. <laughs> Which is why sometimes the series gets a little tricky. Right. Because, you know, they'll have like right. seven old men sitting in there. Right. And and it, it's it's hard to distinguish who is who. Yeah. At first, I thought he was Nucky's lawyer when when George came in, and uh-huh, then and then, uh-huh. I, then I went, no, no, I think the lawyer had white hair. I think like it's just, it's hard. Yeah. Um, but I'm assuming that George is one of the the. Well, he's one of the people in sort of the Commodore circle, obviously, yes. because he's the one who. It, and and he, checking on. Uh, thank God for John again because we. Yeah, I, we were, we were I, absolutely. I actually, I actually left. You the left room. the room. I did. I'm such a wimp. I don't like and to see blood. I don't like to see people harming each other. It was gnarly. I'm just gonna say because I wasn't looking. Yeah. I'll, but I heard it. And it's. St- can I describe yeah, just parts of it? Yeah, please So so it started with um, Eli grabbing a wrench, uh, mm-hmm. like a pipe wrench, and basically smashing George in the throat. Oh. And so what a difficult thing to deal with because he's. That's what I was doing. Yeah. So he's he's recoiling and trying to breathe, and you know there's this trauma going on, and then Eli just takes that pipe wrench and just bludgeons the heck out of him. He was a bloody pulp by the end of it. It was I terrible. Just, and and then he brings in his his like second in command. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like like Clean why would up you in my barn? Like why would you bring him in? He's like the biggest oaf in the world. Right. Like you. But uh, loyal. I, Nate, Nate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See? This is true. I'm telling you, I'm crowbarring that theme I know, in anywhere no, I, I can. I love it. No, it's great. It's brilliant. And then we come to, I mean, basically the, the night ends in in just, every, well, not everybody, but a couple of people dying. Because yeah. uh, Jimmy pays and, and Richard pay a visit to Mr. Parkhurst, mm-hmm. who so oddly and and yet elegantly is like examining um this the fine details right <laughs> of like this native american uh broadcloth or whatever yeah. it was a breech cloth and and he's like isn't this beautiful isn't the beadwork amazing and you're like but but you slaughtered them right the reason you have that in your hand is because that guy's dead like what what how how sick are you that you like kill something and then hold on to it or or and and then in the wide shot you could see his collection in the set uh-huh. decorating of all of the Native American, um, I don't want to say apparel, but kind of. Artifacts? Ad- uh, yeah, thank you, mm-hmm. artifacts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at, what t- at what point, I'm curious, does something become an artifact? I, I'm, uh, by then it's an artifact, right? Yeah. I would think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so he's, it's just all there. And, and they so beautifully, although I kept my eyes closed, um, 
it was kind of like there was like it was like Hammurabi's code, justice right. being done. Exactly. They they exacted their revenge. They scalp him. Mm-hmm. Again, uh, we didn't see it. Nope. We didn't I just see saw it. the knife going right here, and I yeah, went, oh, I did too. I closed my eyes and said, "John, are they scalping him?" Yeah, they did, and that's um. So, I wonder. No, so, no, go ahead. A little bit of nobility, right? Because yeah. it was sort of giving him his comeuppance. And I mean, I like to think, I'm sure it didn't go this far with Jimmy and, and Richard, but I like to think sort of, um, you know, avenging the nasty death that this, that Mr. Parkhurst had, had, uh, yeah, know, slaughtered. placed down on all these Native American people. It was, it was interesting the dialogue that they crafted saying they thought they could fight off the bullets with magic. Yeah. That broke my heart. Yeah. That just, I just, ugh. I thought, oh, God. Just vicious. It, Yeah, it, it was really vicious. And so there was, yeah, some some justice was done this evening on Boardwalk mm-hmm. Empire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and again, I just I just thought it was really beautiful that by the, I mean, I know it's sick that cause, because we're talking about them killing someone. But, I know, I know. Um, but that Richard is sort of back, I hope, on track. Yeah. And, um, you know, ha- has, again, a, a reason to live. Yes, yes. Something to live for. And 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 just... We don't want him to die. Just, you know, because so, we're not horrible people. They did an excellent job of painting Mr. Parkhurst as, as a, vil- a bad guy. As a villain yeah. for us to feel that way. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, like, we were, like, casually led. No, 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 <laughs> of course. Obviously. You know, by the end, we're like, yeah, that's happening. I, and then we're like, wait a second, I'm rooting for somebody's death. Let me hold on a second and and and... And just check on what we're thinking. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. I think we can go to our commercial, per- commercial and gossip and predictions. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Woo. The biggest new media platform on the web just got bigger. More bandwidth, smoother streaming, lightning, fast download. Don't get technical with me. After Buzz TV is making the jump to hyperspace. Uh, Join the fun at your number one source for after show entertainment. Look at the size of that thing. After Buzz TV. Okie dokie. So uh, I, I have like. Abrupt. Yeah, I know. It's like. <laughs> um, so th- the only gossip that I have is yes. that. Uh, pa- I never can find gossip on Portable Gamer, so like, I'm excited. L- that I had to some. look. Because it was it was not easy to find, but I guess Paz de la Huerta yes. um, was really drunk at the Golden Globes, um, and she has not been leaving a good impression. So, and this was in Rolling Stone magazine. I think this was in like the September October issue, and they were saying that like they wouldn't be surprised if they started writing her. Out. Really? Yeah. Really. Well, I and and she also well, got into like a bar yeah, fight. Yeah, she's been in the. I mean, that's like literally the go- the only gossip that I find is always about her, yeah. about her crazy outfits, about her what she what she wore to the Emmys. Did you see what she no, wore? No, I didn't. Oh my gosh! Look up her okay, Emmy outfit. Okay, I will. It's is it a little really crazy? something? Yeah, and it's uh, her makeup. I, t- I talked about this a couple weeks ago. But oh, her, her makeup, makeup. I was remember seeing like her makeup. It was odd, weird. Odd. It was yeah, really I think weird. she's. Um, let me just put it this way. I don't think she's acting that much no, on the show. I um I, I no, I don't think so either. I don't I don't. And she's I think that's very close to who she is. Yeah. And you know, it's very watchable. It is, and, absolutely. And I think she does a great job. Yeah, and we love her character, but I you know, if you, you, you can't behave, then you know, you gotta go, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. so I, I heard that. And I guess that um Lucky Luciano. Yes. I did some like Google Wikipedia research. They don't call him Lucky Lu- Lu- Luciano. I think maybe we just call him that on the show, but they don't call him that no, for they like don't. another like 10 or 15 years. No, they they call him yeah. Charlie. Yes. And what happens is um, uh, Mr. Masseri, uh, one of the like old Sicilian bosses, yes. like basically like they try to kill him. This happens in real life. I don't. Okay. I, I wish I had the details <laughs> like in okay. front of me, like the actual dates. Okay. And he, sur- he survives like this awful like attempt on his life and and just a brutal stabbing like left oh on my. the beach and so that's why they end up calling him lucky. lucky lucky luciano so that's and also the pete mustaches because we were trying to figure this out like two episodes ago like because they kept talking about the pete mustaches and we're like what what are they talking about and it was the nickname given to like the old sicilian bosses that had come over to italy oh. in new york and last but not least, regarding Lucky Luciano, because this is the only information that I really have, is I yeah. guess he's dating Ashley Simpson. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Huh. Yeah. I, I have no thoughts on that. I'm just I, I kind don't of like, really <laughs> I'm okay. just like, good on you. Hope you're having I'm fun. I'm like, that's cool. But, and, and that's our news and gossip for the week. That's it. That's what we got.
Shall we move to predictions? Yes. Do we get the fun music? And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Jesse, you make me smile. <laughs> All the time. That's DJ Jesse Janity. He's our engineer on the show. Um, okay. What I'm what I'm really hoping for is some good meaty Margaret. That's what that's okay. what I want. All right. Um, because they keep teasing it, you know, with her stashing the money away, like we were talking about last week, and this mm-hmm. week with the information going out, and then her drinking with the. I, I think she's headed for some excitement, for lack of a better word, and yeah. and. Um, because like we were saying earlier, she's got, um, all of this history, you know, going on Mm -hmm. and, and she's, and she's come so far from the beginning of the series to now. I really, cause I, I, you know, I'm always rooting, especially in these heavily male shows to see the female characters like really coming out and doing their thing. And, um, and I love it when she stands up for herself when she stands up for Nucky even right you know and pulled out the gun and and knew to take the ledger when he was when his office was being raided and all those things I know you know I like seeing the woman do sort of heroic things I and agree. so that's kind of my it, I, I it's it's my hope but it's also my prediction because they're laying the seeds for that with Margaret I think yeah what do you got I mean I have like my desires for what I want to happen mm-hmm. and then <laughs> But but my desires are so far fetched for this show. Oh really? Like what? Yeah. Though? Tell us. But like I want I want um, Richards, Jack Houston, Richard yes. to to like find somebody and fall in love and have a nice home. Okay. I just really want that for him. Okay. It's not gonna happen. I don't think. <laughs> no, will. it's not. It's not gonna happen. I um I. But I ca- bless you, Miss Sunshine, for wanting that for him. <laughs> I'm like, please. <laughs> It's so awful. Uh, I, I, I kind of want like Jimmy to move into the big house with his wife, the Commodore's house, and like have that oh, and like yeah. take over. Yeah. I, I really would like for him to to take over. Uh, but what I really honestly think is going to happen is Eli is going to have to go back to Nucky because he's just killed someone and he is in big trouble right. for that murder. I think right. we're going to see. Even though he's maybe, the law. Even though he is the law, maybe not in this episode, this coming episode, but in following episodes, he's going to have to, if, if you take a life, you're going to, something is going to arise. Of course. Yeah. yeah. There are repercussions to that sort of behavior. And I think what's going to happen with uh, Jimmy and Richard is they're, they're going to go on a bit of a slaying spree with these old men. I think I think that's gonna I think they're gonna start knocking people off, kind of like they do in The Godfather in that one really? episode where like, you know, he's like going up. It's like it's like the, the christening episode mm-hmm. where like they knock off all the bosses, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. like he's having his christening, his baby's christening right. at the same time. Right. I think they're gonna knock off a lot of the those old men. And I'm very curious what the butcher is gonna do about wanting his money back. Cause he's he's mean, he's man. Scary. He's mean. And I was saw if you go to the HBO special features in the last episode, he has like this whole little great special feature about how he took like the this, butcher does. Yeah, how he uh, took like this like that. first class butchering course, and like went kind of like I mean he really he really goes for it. I mean, like I don't mind getting my hands dirty acting wise, but like I chopping up a big piece of veal, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Dude. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I just don't did, cast me as a butcher, okay? You know, funny enough, about three weeks ago, we were shooting an episode uh, for my show. It's really not a plug It's because nobody can see It's in El Paso, Texas. If you're in El Paso, Texas, absolutely look for me on PBS, the Tamara I, Twist. I love but, that. Um, but we did a little scene that hasn't aired yet, but it will. And I had fish thrown at me. Oh. Like whole, whole fish. And it was so nasty. One of them actually hit me in the face. I had fish guts on me. I was, it was nasty. But yeah, so I, uh, you know, getting hands dirty. Yeah, I got my, I got my everything dirty with fish guts. It was gross. Ride horses and go camping. But I don't want to like touch fish guts. Fish guts. I did. I did it for my art. And I did it for you people in El Paso. (laughs) Enjoy. Bless your heart. Well, I think that's it. I think that's a wrap. I'm so looking forward to next week's episode. We're kind of kind of already halfway through the season. Right. We've got five episodes left. Oh, so, no. um, yeah, so this is exciting. So uh, we will uh, see you next week. Yep.
From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, buzz you, you later. AfterBuzz. AfterBuzz. After buzz. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.